Here we go, high school students. Welcome back to 242 Math. I am your host, Raphael Thompson, and today we will continue to look at the entire BGCSE syllabus and work typical questions. Answers will follow, of course. Get your pen, pencil ruler, geometry set, graph paper, and your trusted calculators. Remember, you can use calculators in these exams, and remember to show working and to use your pen for your answers except for constructions and uh, graphs. Here we go. Number one, integers. Why? The set Y shows some numbers. You have to write the irrational numbers, write the prime numbers, write the integers, write the square number. Let me help you. There would be two irrational numbers, three prime numbers, five integers, and only one square number get it done i am trying to help you here so let's see if you can get one two three four marks for number one i help you with the answers go ahead work them waiting now let's move on to number two factors express 180 as a product of its prime factors start to divide guys use your calculator divide and keep dividing until you get one then give me 180 as a product of its prime factors and of course i normally begin with you can begin dividing by two you don't have to but that's how i do it and then continue dividing okay let's move on to number three decimal and significant figures evaluate 32.568 divided by 30.98 all of that over 12.09 times 42.65 write your answer correct to three significant figures i'm not going to help you here you've done this a number of times and b three decimal places write that same answer correct to three decimal places you need to know the difference between significant figures and decimal places look at the previous test and the answers are there we've already done these things over and over so you should know how to do it by now Use your calculator and work it out quickly. Remember, you can use the memory and then recall and get your answer quickly. Let's move on to number four, rate. A vehicle travel 2,210 2, meters in two minutes, 30 seconds. Calculate the average speed in kilometers per hour. Change 2,210 meters to kilometers. And in the same process, you're changing two minutes, 30 seconds to one hour so begin two minutes 30 seconds you have to change that all to seconds and then work from there remember 60 seconds one minute 60 minutes one hour 60 seconds one minute 60 minutes one hour you learn that from primary school so let's go and work number four and we're moving on to number five percentage Ray borrowed $2,240 from a bank at a simple interest rate of 10.5% per annum. Calculate A, the amount of interest repaid after 18 months. B, the total amount repaid after 18 months. And his first payment for the loan was $144.80 and the balance is paid in equal monthly installments. C, calculate the amount of each installment. Let me up here. Formula for simple interest, PRTO 100. Principal times rate times time O 100. And the rate here is 10.5%, so you got to change that to an improper fraction. So you're going to have 200 on the bottom. And the amount is the simple interest plus the principal. The simple interest plus the principal will give you the amount. That's as much as I can do to help you with number five. And let's move on to number six, already loading. Race paid $2,115 for four weeks. A holiday weekly loading of 17.5% was applied to his normal pay for the four weeks in order to get this amount. Calculate his normal weekly pay. Holiday loading, go ahead and work it. 
you've had holiday loading problems before as well you don't know how they will give you the problem so look at all of these examples to help you with the one they would give you on the test got it let's move on to number seven fractions there are 265 days about in a normal year two-fifths of the year has passed what fraction of the year is left a and b how many days are left in the year so first of all something very simple do a right away tell me what fraction is left have it right now what fra that fraction will help you to tell me how many days are left in the year if there are 365 days in the year work it and give me the answer the answer would be a certain number of days would be left in that year you have the fraction let's change the fraction into numbers got it number eight exponents if a is equal to three times ten to the negative two and b is equal to six times ten calculate 1ab 2a divided by b when you're multiplying exponents and dealing with exponents there's a rule you have to follow when you're dividing and dealing with exponents there's also a rule you have to follow if you're not sure just get your calculator 3 times 10 to the negative 2 write that number and then 6 times 10 write that number then multiply the numbers for 1 and then divide the numbers for 2 simple as that or use exponents to work it out I will show you both of these ways at the end or you can just use that to check your answers when you do it in exponents. Your calculator will always help you out with stuff like this. Number nine, indices and radicals. A, evaluate one quarter to the negative a half. One quarter in brackets to the negative a half. So you got to get rid of that negative power. You need to know what to do. And then B, simplify 27A6 in bracket and all of that is to the power two-thirds so you have to find 27 to the two-thirds power and then a to the six to the two-thirds power so your answer will have a number and then a to something work it work it number 10 matrices if a is equal to the matrix 25 10 45 20 find a to the negative one or find the inverse of a and they give you the formula guys no excuse for getting this wrong the formula is given to you at the beginning the inverse of that if you have a matrix a b c d the inverse is one over a times d minus c times b and then you switch a and b the numbers that a and D and then you put negative to C and B then you work that and whatever you left with would be the answer for the inverse of that matrix so just match your numbers up to A B C D and you're straight no tricks here just put your numbers in and you have it you don't even have to memorize the formula number 11 matrices again Kim and Fran are two girls who attend North Long Island High School the following table shows averages for coursework and examination grades attained during last term. Use matrices to find their final grades if coursework scores contributed 40% and the examination scores contributed 60% to the final grades. So write your matrices for Kim and Fran from the first one, 2 by 2, and then write a, a 1 by 1 matrix for the weight and put 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. Then remember what you have to do when you're using those matrices to find the final grades remember you're going across and then in the first one going down in the last matrix so it's rows by columns and we move on to algebra simplify 3x negative 2y squared z to the negative 3 and in bracket 5x is 6y to the negative 1 z to the negative 2 in brackets so look at your numbers so first you deal with 3 times 5 what's your answer look at x and then deal with the x's or you know what you can do at the beginning just put 3 and you no know, you, you can use your indices the x's 
you are multiplying so you have to know what to do with it with the exponents and then look at the y's and then look at the z's and then see what you're left with remember be careful with the negative numbers that are the exponents so deal with numbers then deal with x's deal with y's then deal with the z's let's move on to another algebra one number 13 simplify now here is what i was trying to tell you you can actually put five a times a b times b times b times c on the top that's what that means and then on the bottom put 10 times a times b times b times c times c cancel out your numbers five can go into ten and then cancel out your a's and see where you're left with any a's top or bottom cancel out your b's see if you're left with any b's top and bottom cancel out your c's see if you're left with any c's top or bottom and what you're left with would be answers deal with your numbers deal with the a's deal with the b's deal with the c's or use in use the indices use your exponents and work it out remember if you're dividing exponents what you do got it and you move on to number 14 factorize 6x squared minus 11x minus 10 now you have to find the factors for 6 at the front and for 10 at the back so it could be 1 and 6 at the front or 3 and 2 6 or at the back it could be 2 and 5 or 10 and 1 so do your course put your your numbers down cross multiply you remember you need to add to give you negative 11 and they must multiply to give you negative 10 when you use your numbers when you cross multiply they must add to give you negative 11 and then multiply to give you negative 10 at the back so use those numbers i just gave you and see which one works this is trial and error guys that's the way you work these trial and error got it yes we move on to number 15 algebra again simplify and you have an algebraic fraction a plus 2 over a plus 3 minus a minus 2 over a minus 3 your lcm is a plus 3 times a minus 3 use it and work it just like you work a normal fraction with numbers go ahead and work it in the end when you simplify your answer will be an expression there will be a lot of algebra on the test so you have to get used to being able to use algebra to work things out that's how it is let's move on to number 16 algebra again if y is equal to mx plus c a find m when y is equal to 2x equal to negative 1 and c is equal to 5 and then b make x the formula make x the subject of this formula okay so go ahead put your values in for a uh, you can leave it as it is or turn it around put m make m the subject and then find the the number you get when you put y is 2x is negative 1 and c is 5 be careful with the negative 1 and then for b you have to make x the subject so you have to put get x to the front and you have a final equation for x at the front that's what you do when you make x the subject of this formula let's move on to number 17 in a way this is algebra again inequality solved 3 plus 10x is less than or equal to 7x plus 12 work that first solve it and then b represent the solution on a number line when you get your answer for a draw a number line and show me the answer you got from a on it and then c hence list the integers that are solutions to this inequality from the same number line you can give me numbers and remember you must be able to use three dots mean the numbers continue on because you can't give me all of the possible solutions by writing them down so once you put three dots that means the, the numbers would continue in that order and so on that's what it means let's move on to number 18 simultaneous equation two numbers x and y are such that x is greater than y their sum is 14 and their difference is 9 that's important write the simultaneous equations for this information and then b that's a b solve the simultaneous equations to find the numbers x and y so get to work use their sum is 14 that means something that's one equation and their difference is 9 that's another equation so use the two equations and then once you write them down that's the points for that right there for a and then b you have to solve it so 
you get one point for A for B, you'll probably get three or four marks for that. So you have to be able to solve for X and Y. Once you solve for X, substitute it into one equation, find Y. Let's move on to number 19, functions. The functions f and g are defined as follows. f of x is equal to x squared plus 1, and g of x is equal to 2 minus x. A, state the value of gf of negative 5, and then D, find g to the minus 1. That means the inverse, the inverse of g. Okay, go ahead and work it and see if you can get the answers to those. Functions, again, al is algebra, a lot of algebra involved here. I told you before, algebra dominates a lot of the questions on the exam papers. So you have to be able to be well versed in algebra, guys. Practice. That's all it takes. So number one is straightforward. Two steps for that. And then B, the inverse of G. Two steps for that. Number 20, geometry. The polygon below is a regular hexagon. Calculate the size of each angle. You should know what regular means. That's important for this. You have to find x, y, and z. x, y, or z. Let's go work it. Right away you can find x, then you can find y, then you can find z. You don't have to find them in that order, but I am telling you that's the easiest way to do this now. x first, then you get to y, and then you can find z. Or you can find x, then you can find z, and then once you find z, then you can calculate y. But you don't have to find the, the letters in the order that they have them. Once you're able to work it, that's fine. Just put your answers in. Whatever you're comfortable with finding first. Number 21 vectors in the triangle ACB below. Vector AB is equal to A, vector AC is equal to B, and vector BO is equal to 2 thirds BC, and vector AD is equal to K, AB. Find in terms of AB and or K, simplifying where possible. Vector BC, vector BO, vector AO, vector DO. Not too difficult. Once you know how to deal with vectors, remember the direction is important of the vector and then you would go in a triangle, you would go from tail to the head in order to find your solutions. For vectors, remember you go from tail to head. So go ahead and work them. Remember your answer would be an A, B and or K. Number 22, sets and Venn diagrams. The universal set would be prime numbers between 1 and 30. That's important. I'll say it again. The universal set, prime numbers between 1 and 30. And A would be 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 29. They left out some. B is 3, 7, 19. They left out some. Complete the Venn diagram below using this information. The ones they left out, you still have to put them in. And you need to know where to put them. List the members of A in a section. B and then number 2. And number three and number and C work out C as well. I won't say what it is when I read it, you would know what it is. So you should be able to read these and know what the symbols stand for. Okay, do that quickly. Remember, put your numbers in on it first, then go from there. Then let's move on to number 23 mensuration. The diagram shows a semicircle with a radius of 15 centimeters. A right angle triangle is attached to it with a base of 24 centimeters. Calculate the nearest whole number A, area of the triangle, and B, the area of the semicircle. Use pi is equal to 3.14. For the area of the triangle, I give you the formula. Area of the triangle is the half times the base times the height. And for this one, you have the base and you need to find the height. So do that first before you find the area of the triangle. And then for the area of the circle, it's important that you remember it's a semicircle. So that's important. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So what is the area of a semicircle? That's the big question. Ah, it's not that hard. You can figure that out. And then work it. The formulas are given, guys. And number 24, scale drawings. A surveyor makes a sketch of the field below at Old Byte High School. AB is 45 meters. AD is 60 meters. DC is equal to 40 meters. Angle A is 90 degrees. Angle D is 100 degrees. So you have to make a scale drawing of this field above. Use a scale of 1 centimeter to represent 10 meters. And then use your diagram to find the actual distance of BC. They want the actual distance. So first thing you do is take your protractor out, put it down, and get an angle of 90 degrees and draw a line going up. 45 meters, use the scale for that, and then draw a line going across 60 meters, use the scale for that. One centimeter represent 10 meters. Then at D, once you get it, 
use a protractor draw an angle 100 degrees going up and use the scale for 40 meters and then the, between B and C measure that with the ruler and that would be your answer guys done graphs 25 the frequency table shows how the students of grade 8 at the Sageries High School travel to school bicycle jitney walk car and 312 2532 a pie chart is to be drawn to show the different medicine you travel calculate the sector angle for each method on travel then sketch and label the pie chart so for those numbers you have to change those to the degrees so remember how you do that so for each of those numbers it comes a certain amount of degrees and all of them would add up to 360 degrees because 360 degrees in a circle that's a pie chart circle and then use your protractor and draw the angles for the pie chart from the center and you're straight once you draw those sectors in label them and that's your pie chart Let's move on to number 26, measures of central tendency. The results of 400 candidates in a Bahamian National Mathematics examination were as follows. And you have the percentage marks and then the number of candidates. So first thing you do is on that cumulative, cumulative frequency table, you have to put the numbers in for me. This is just part A. So do that quickly. Know what you have to do with the numbers 5, 12, 20, 45, 75, 85, 103, 42, 10, and 3. There's something you have to do with those numbers to get the cumulative frequency on that chart, on that table. And you need that in order to draw the graph, which is, you know what they would have to do for B. And here we go, 26B, using a horizontal scale of one centimeter represent 10% and a vertical scale of two centimeters represent 50 candidates Draw and label a cumulative frequency curve for these results. All right, just like I told you, you would have to use that table to draw your cumulative frequency curve. So go ahead, plot it. Remember when you draw it, you draw it freehand, not with your ruler, freehand so that it's curved and not straight lines you're using for the cumulative frequency curve. So do it as best as you could because that's all you have to do for this. You don't have to calculate anything else. So draw it freehand and make the curves as best as you can. Don't use your rulers to join the points. Remember, you use a pencil for this. Got it? And number 27, graphs again. Complete the table and use the values to draw the graph of 5y is equal to 2x plus 5. Use a scale of 1 centimeter to 1 unit on the x and y axis. So you have your x values 0, 5, 10, and then put them into 2 fifth x plus one y is equal to two fifth x plus one that's what you get when you um, manipulate that equation so find your values use your graph to find approximate values for x when y is four y when x is nine and the gradient of the line and then the y intercept you're using your graph to find these things okay so go ahead put the numbers in on the table And we move on to 28. ABC is a triangle with AB is equal to 9 centimeters, BC is equal to 5 centimeters, and the angle ABC is equal to 120 degrees. The point Y is the foot of the perpendicular from A. Calculate A, the length of AY, correct to one decimal place, the length of YC, correct to one decimal place, and C, the area of triangle AYB, correct to the nearest whole number. So you have to give the answers exactly how they want it in order to get full marks. They want it to one decimal place, put it to one. If you want it to um, the nearest whole number, put it to the nearest whole number. But go ahead and begin your working. This is trigonometry, so you got to know sine, tangent, cosine, all of those things. And they will be given to you on the paper as well. Okay, number 29, bearings. Look at the diagram below. Andres A is... 315 kilometers from Kisal Bank C on a bearing of 0, 36 degrees. Calculate the bearing of Kisal Bank from Andres. That's important. Read it again. Calculate the bearing of the Kisal Bank from Andres. So that is important. You have to do a calculation in order to find that bearing. Remember, bearing is always taken from north. And I have the lines there for you showing north the direction north got it 
number 30 probability the diagram shows two dice with each of the six faces numbered from one to six the two dice are thrown together and each total is recorded complete the table above to show these totals that's a so you now have to do something with the results afterwards for b so go ahead write your totals in when you throw the, um, throw the two dice Do it quickly. Thirty-six numbers you have to put in when you do the additions, and you can do that in your head. No calculators, guys. Too easy. Too easy for that. One plus one. Come on. K B. Using this table, write the probability that the total is one less than nine, two more than twelve, three. The two dice are thrown together eighteen times. How many times should you expect to get a total of five? Go ahead and work those. So use the numbers you put on that table to answer the questions. Remember for the table there, the dice are thrown 36 times. But for three, if they're thrown 18 times, then you have to figure out what the answer would be for that. I helped you a little. Got it? Okay, we move on. 31 constructions. Again, use a pen, a pencil for this when you're doing construction A. Construct triangle ABC where A to B is 3 centimeters, A to C is 4 centimeters, and B to C is 5 centimeters. So you're going to get a right angle triangle. B, B bisect angle ABC. Use a compass ruler and pencil. Go ahead, get to work. Do your construction first. Draw that triangle ABC, then bisect angle a b c you should know where that angle is bisect it remember i need to see all your marks in order to get full marks for this construction question and you're using your compass your ruler and your pencil you can use your protractor to check to make sure your it's a right angle triangle to begin with and use your ruler to check to measure the sides differentiation 32. Given that y is equal to x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1, calculate a dy or dx, b, the gradient of the curve at the point where x is equal to 1, and c, the equation of the tangent at this point. So go ahead, differentiation. Let's see if you know how to deal with finding the gradient. And when you get to c, the equation of the tangent at this point, you, you need to remember how you would use the formula um, y minus y1 is equal to m and in bracket x minus x1 to help solve that. So I'm helping you a little bit with that. That's the harder part of this question. You should know how to do dy or dx straightforward and the gradient of the curve at that point where x equal to 1 is straightforward as well. Number 33, the circle. AB is a tangent to the circle CDE center F at C. Calculate the value of x, y, and z straightforward once you understand the circle theorems and right away you can get x straightforward once you get x then you can get y and once you find y then you can find z or z do it in that order and that's the way you can get this done guys not a hard problem once you understand the first part So use that 46 degrees that they gave you. Got it? Okay, transformations 34. Use the coordinate plane below to describe the following transformations. Mapping A onto D, mapping B, mapping A onto B, then C, mapping A onto C, and D, mapping E onto F. And I help you with that one, E onto F. I put the lines in for you so it won't be too hard for some of you who may not have done enlargements or dilations once you've done it you will know exactly how to do it remember you must write your descriptions in a certain way that is important so you know we're dealing with reflections rotations and translations and dilations here we go now answers are upcoming 
Let's see what you did on this test in preparation for your examination. Here are answers for number one, the integers. So you had square root of two and pi, irrational, and then two, three, square root of five. Square root of five, square root of 25 is five, so that's why it's a prime number, and that's why it's also an integer. Square root of number was nine, only one. Hope you got four marks, all of those correct. I helped you at the beginning. I told you how many numbers would be in the answers. Good? Okay, number two. And 180 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. If you have that, that's correct. Or you can put 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. That is correct also. And there I have the division. You didn't have to start dividing by 2. You could have started with 5. And then by 3 and then by 2 is up to you. Number 3, doesn't play significant figures. When you work that out on your calculator, you get 2.038751716. When you get that right, you answer the 3 significant figures, 2.04. And three dozen place, 2.039. You should know what those terms mean. If not, look back, practice, and you can get it done. Number four, rate. And the answer, the average speed at the end was 54.44 kilometers per hour. So you had to calculate 3,600 seconds, change um, 120, 150 seconds to 3,600 seconds. And that's what you do to get that final answer. Okay, number five percentage and the simple interest was three hundred fifty two dollars and eighty cents the amount after 18 months was two thousand five hundred ninety dollars and eighty cents and the installments would be paid in one forty four one hundred forty four dollars for 17 months they already took out the first payment one forty four eighty that would be answers for that guys hope you see how you do that so the loan is repaid in 18 months and we move on to number six holiday loading so if you four weeks pay is two thousand one hundred fifteen dollars and you work out one that's one hundred seventeen point five percent one percent and then work at hundred percent you get four hundred and fifty dollars for one week because you divide the one thousand eight hundred by four to get his normal pay for a week and it would be four hundred and fifty dollars got it Number seven, fractions, and if two-fifths of the years pass, then three-fifths would be left. Simple calculation. How many days? Three-fifths of 365, 219 days. This is one of the simpler one on the paper, guys. Hope you got that correct. Once you know the fraction is, you just multiply and then find your numbers for the year. You know, it's 365 and a quarter days in a year, or 366 in a leap year. Exponents, 8. You have to multiply first AB, and the answer for that would be 1.8. And then 2, you have to divide, answer is 0 0.005, 0 0.0005. Hope you got those correct. Or just put in your numbers at the beginning, use a calculator, and these the answers there would be the answers you would get. You didn't have to use exponents, you could just do it on the calculator and you get the same answer or do that to check your answer. K okay, number nine indices and radicals, the one quarter to the negative one, you have to put one over it and change it to positive for your work, you get four, and then simplify 27, eight, six, two, third, you get nine, eight to the fourth. The cube root of 27 is three, and when you square it, you get nine, and then you multiply six by two thirds, you get two times two, eight to the four. That's it. For indices and radicals. And we want matrices, and I gave you the, the formula for it. So once you put those numbers in, and you get 1 over 50, and then 20, negative 10, negative 45, 25, your final answer would be 2 fifths, negative 1 fifth, negative 9 tenths, and a half. Once you um, cancel down where you're dividing by the 50. Okay, but just follow the, the formula, and then you would be straight with this. And they will give you the formula, guys, no problem. Matrices, again, you, the two, you get the matrix at the front was 90, 100, 98, 92. And then the one at the back was 0 0.4, 0 0.6, multiply, and then add. So you get 96 for Kim, and then 94.4 for Fran. That would, that would be the answers for those, the scores for those students. So Kim would get 96%, and, and Fran would get 94 Okay, let's move on to algebra, and here you have to multiply, 3, 5 is 15, x would be x to the 4, 
and then y would be y, z would be to the negative 5. That's it. Okay, remember when you're multiplying, you would be adding your exponents. Okay, so don't get confused with the negative numbers. Use a calculator if you're unsure. Put the numbers in and it'll tell you what you get. Number 13, algebra simplify again. I said you could just write it out and then cancel. And what you're left with is AB on the top and 2C on the bottom. Yeah, that 2 comes from 5 into 10, 2. And there would be a C on the bottom. A, B, 2, C. That's it. On the bottom. When you cancel out, you will get the same thing. So if you're not sure about the exponents and what to do, just write it out and cancel. Number 14, algebra again, not factorize that. You would, you would get 3x plus 2 in bracket 2x minus 5 or 2x minus 5 in bracket and then 3x plus 2. Any of those would give you... Uh, 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. Remember, they must add to give you negative 11 in, in, in the middle and multiply to give you negative 10 at the back. So you have to fix the signs properly. Okay, the 6 and 1 would not work, or the 1 and 10 would not work. Number 15 algebra again, when you simplify all of that, you would get negative 6a minus 12 over a squared minus 9. Or if you have a plus 3, a minus 3 on the bottom, that's good. Or that's equal to 6 in bracket negative a negative 2 and then a squared minus 9. Same thing. Or if you have a plus 3 and a minus 3 on the bottom, you then have to multiply to get a squared minus 9. That would be correct as well. A lot of algebra. Number 16, algebra again. First part a. And when you put your values in, m would be equal to negative 3 or negative 1, which is 3. And then b, when you make y make x the subject x would be y minus c over m once you switch that around that's what you would get got it practice more practice it will help you for that inequality first you solve it when you solve it you get x is less than and or equal to 3 less than or equal to 3 for x and that's how you put it on the line and then your numbers would be 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1 and so on. Okay, you can't write all of them so you got to put in so on. But it would start at 3 because it's less than or equal to 3. So it must start at positive 3 and then go into your negative numbers. And quickly, the diagram number 1 would be where it is greater than and number 2 would be where it's less than or equal to would be D less than or equal to and that's why you have the circle that's closed once it's less than or equal to you close the circle okay so that's just to help you with the symbols and how you draw how you do the drawings on them okay let's move on to number 18 simultaneous equations and the simultaneous equations would be x is y is 14 and x minus y is 9 so you get x equal to 11 and a half, and then you substitute that into one of them, and you get y is equal to 2 and a half. That's it, guys. Simultaneous equations, you need to know how to work those to get your final answers. Hope you got full marks for that one. And we move on to number 19, functions. So first of all, g, f, negative 5, two workings to get the final answers, negative 24, and then the inverse of g, when you get x equal to 2 minus y, replace the y with the x. So g to the inverse of g is 2 minus x once you um, work it like that. To the end, you must remember to put switch the x and the y to get the final answer. So the, the inverse of g is equal to 2, not 2 minus y, but 2 minus x. Okay, geometry 20, the polygon below is a regular hexagon. So x was 120 degrees. Why? Because it's 720 degrees divided by 6 angles on the inside. And it's regular, so all of them would be the same. Y was 50 and Z was 20 degrees. Y, um, the, the Z, you just have to add the 7 and 30 and subtract it from 120. And then the, for the trapezoid, you would find Y, 120 plus 120 plus 70, subtract it from 360 to find Y. Okay, vectors, the first one, and I broke it up for you. I did 1 and 2 first one. BC is negative A plus B, or I'll just write it as B minus A, same thing. If you have negative A plus B, that is correct, mark it. Okay, BO is two-third in bracket B minus A. Two-third in bracket minus A plus B is the same thing. So once you have it like that, then you would get full marks. 
So don't hurt your head if you don't have it the way I have it written there. Once you have it the way I said it, you would get the marks as well. And number three, AO is one third A plus two third B or one third in bracket A plus two B, same thing. And number four, DO is one third A plus two B in bracket minus AK. That would be the answers for those vectors, guys. These were the harder ones, but you have to know how to work stuff like this. That, that is how they will throw it to you on paper three. So don't let them scare you. Just work it, guys. Know how to do it and work it. Number 22, set some Venn diagrams to put your numbers in. In the middle, you get three and seven, and then 19, B, and then five, 11, 37. And you must put two and 23 in. Those were the missing numbers. So intersection is three and seven. A to the C complement was not in A, it's 2, 19, 23, and A union B complement 2, 23, and the number of elements in A union B, 8. Count the numbers in, the, in A union B. That's what N, A union B means, number of elements in A union B. Let's move on to mensuration. And first you have to find the area of the triangle, so you have to find um, the letter H, what the letter H is for the height, and the height was 18, so it's half times 25, it is 216 square centimeters. And then there, the semicircle pi is 3.14. Remember, you have to use a half because it's a semicircle. So that come, you worked that out, and you got 353.25 square centimeters. Remember, area would always be given in square units. You have to remember to get full marks. Scale drawing. So remember, you put, you use a protractor, 90 degree angle, draw a line up, draw a line across, uh, 4.5 centimeters across, 6 centimeters. Go to the end with D. Use your protractor, do an angle 100 degrees, and go up 4 centimeters, and then take your ruler from B to C, measure that. That would be 6.7 meters, or change it, 67 meters, guys. That was simple and straightforward. That's how you would work it, okay? Hope you got that one. And 25 graphs, the frequency table for bicycle is, when you add up the number 3, 12, and 25, 32 is 72. So for bicycle, it would be um, 3 over 72 times 360. That's where we got a 15 from. And then 60 for jitney, 125 for walk, and 160 for car. Okay, so that's how you work it to get the angles. Then you do your pie chart, and that's how you construct it. Use your protractor, draw the angles in, and then label it. Okay, measure center of tendency. And first you have to complete the cumulative frequency table. So just add five, and then for the next one, it'll be five plus 12. And then the next one will be 12 plus 20. Then the answer to that would, would be, whatever answer you get, you continue adding the, the following number onto it. So five plus 12 give you the, the, next, the number, and then the answer you get, add 20 onto that. Then the answer you get, add 45 and continue until you get up to 400. And that would be the table. Use the table to draw the graph. So you remember the, the scale, one centimeter to 10, 10%, and then on the vertical, and two centimeters represent 50, 50 candidates on the vertical, one centimeter to represent 10 on the horizontal, that's what you would get. Okay, remember to use your freehand to draw the curve, not your ruler, not straight lines. So draw it freehand. And that would be what you would get. You don't have to do anything with it, just draw it. Number 27 graphs, a completed table. So once you put in zero, you get one, five, you get three, for 10, you get five. Plot the points and you get that red line. That's the graph you would get. Five y is equal to x plus five. Okay, graph. And the second part, you have to calculate x when y is four, seven and a half. Y when x is nine, you get four and three fifth. And then the gradient of the line is two fifth. And the y-intercept is one. Where it cuts the y-axis, that will work out to be one. So you can use your graph to find all of these things. And we move on to number 28, trigonometry. And first, AY worked out to be 7.8. You had to find the sine of 60 degrees, 9 times sine of 60 degrees, 7.8. B, you had to find the sine of 30 degrees, 9 sine 30. Use a calculator, guys, 9.5 centimeters. And then the area triangle, AYB, was a half times the length times the, the base times the height, 18 square centimeters. Use your calculator to figure out the sine of 60 and the sine of 30. Then multiply and get your answer. Remember, write your answer correct to the number of places they wanted. Bearings. 
and you go to Andrus and you draw that the red line I drew, drew in would show you the bearing that you need so you know it's 180 plus X and X is 36 why that one at Andrus is parallel to the line at the north line at Kisal Bank so if it's 36 there then it's 36 and where they have X they're alternate angles and so it's 180 plus 30 it's 216 degrees that's the bearing guys the Kisal Bank from Andrus okay let's go on to probability now these are the numbers you've had put in and do this in your head, you could have been able to do this in your head, you get the numbers, keep adding 1 and 1, and 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1, 5, 1 and 6, and then continue. That's what you would get, that's the easy part. The numbers go up to 12. Got all of that? Next? Here comes the hard part. No, it isn't that hard. Okay, 1, you have to find, and the probability is the total is less than 9. 26 numbers and then it's over 36, it's 13 over 18. More than 12, no number and that's more than 12, zero. If you throw two dice together, 18 times you should get two. Five, two times, because there you have it four times for 36 throws and 18 is a half 36, so you get five twice. You should get five twice. That's how you work that out. And we move on to number 31. Construct the triangle and that's how you construct the triangle. It's a right angle triangle. At at a, a is 90 degrees so once you do that then you bisect angle ABC and that's how you would I need to see those marks where you cut the um, AB and cut BC and then use your compass and draw your arcs and then bisect angle B that's how it would look once you do that you would get full marks for a question like this remember use a pencil differentiation um, A dy dx 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 and when the grade, when x is 1, the gradient is 6. Just put that equal to 6 and work it. And then C, your equation would be y is equal to 6x minus 2. At the beginning, I told you y minus y1 is equal to m and x minus x1. And you use that to get your equation. Remember, when x is 1, figure out what y is. And then you use that. y would be 4. Okay, the circle, 33. Uh, x would be 2 times 46. So that's the angle at the center and then it's subtended at the circumference so the angle at the center would be double that 92 y is, y is 44 and z was 46 okay once you find x subtract it from 180 to find and divide by 2 to find y and then subtract it from 90 because that's a 90 degree angle for y z to get z or z transformations you had to do the mapping a on the d is a reflection in the line x equal to negative a half and the rotation was 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin we showed you how to do those guys in rotations and reflections you're not finished because you have to do c and d and c was a translation using the vector 9 negative 7 D is an enlargement of triangle E with a scale factor of 2 and the center of enlargement at the origin, at the middle. Scale factor 2, just look at the sides and see that if it's 1 for E and it's 2 for F, scale factor 2. That's how come you get a scale factor. And the origin, I have the lines in to help you. Thank you for watching guys. Hope you got 100% or close to it. If not, we have test 3 coming up to help you for your BGCSE exam which will be coming up shortly. Okay, once you practice these tests and you can get 50% or more on it, then you will be successful in the BGCSE exam. I am telling you that. So thank you for watching. God bless you. And we'll see you in the next one. That's a wrap.